we all know what it feels like when you're trying to do for something for someone you love and you're not doing it as a trade, you're not trying to get something back, you're just doing it because it's what you're made for. And um, I always tell people motive does matter. That if you're just doing something for yourself, there's nothing wrong with that because life supports whatever else supports life. If you're part of life and you're trying to do something that's gonna make your life better, I think the universe, God, whatever proper term for you, whatever your belief system is, you know, infinite intelligence gets connected to you and it gives you insights. But I think if you're trying to serve more than yourself, more life than just you, when things support more of life, more of life shows up to support you. But I got so near the end where you think life has no meaning, it scared the hell out of me and I developed tools and I've never gone back there. I mean. Have I gotten pissed or angry? Of course, people all think, you're not happy all the time, are you? No, I'm not happy all the time. But I'm happy the vast majority of the time because I'm doing what I love with who I love and there's a meaning in what I do. And when you have those three things, life is pretty magnificent. And if you and I want to look at the quality of our life, there's only way to find it. One way, really, that's real. How do you feel every day? If every day of your life you got a billion dollars and every day you feel guilty or angry, by the way, nothing worse than an angry rich man or woman, isn't there? You just want to slap them, don't you? People are not one way. We are a reflection of the states we're living in. When you're in a frustrated state, an overwhelmed state, a tired state, your brain processes completely differently than if you're in a passionate state, whether you're feeling determined, whether you're feeling committed, whether you feel completely resolved. So learning to change the leader's state, learning how to change your own state. Because you know, people, one of the silliest questions I get asked is, you're not really that happy, are you? Or you have bad days, don't you? Of course they have you know, bad times. But I don't have bad days anymore, and it's not BS, it's because I've trained myself like an athlete to go in these peak states so often that they're just natural for me. It's like building a muscle. So it's not like I'm so smart or I'm just so positive. It's just like, why would I waste my time stressing out? And while most of you in this room would call yourself an entrepreneur and you would be entrepreneurial, by this definition, it's a little different. Most people think of an entrepreneur as anybody starts multiple businesses. No, that's not true. Some artists are multiple businesses because they want to get all kinds of things for all kinds of people. Some managers want to do multiple businesses so they feel like they have multiple systems. But entrepreneurs in it for one thing, the juice of risk. They want to make money. And by the way, an entrepreneur, will they sell this business, yes or no? For the right price, they'll sell anything. And their mindset is, it, sell it, I'll start another one. Sell it, I'll buy another one. They are not attached. They might enjoy the product or service, they might be proud of the product or service, but they're in it for the risk. And they're the kind of person that when they lose massively, they jump up, dust themselves off, and want to do it again. Unless you expand your identity, you're going to basically keep where you are. You might improve a little or not. You might go up and down a bit, but you're going to stay within a realm. If you're going to have an explosive breakthrough to another level, physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, then we got to not only give you the tools, we got to shift that internal sense of who you really are and have you find that you are more than anything that's ever happened to you, that you can handle whatever shows up, even if it's incredibly scary or uncomfortable. Most people want to be happy, but their habit is to be worried or pissed off or frustrated <laughs> or stressed. And so they're, they've got a highway to stress and they got a dirt road to happiness. So I wire myself. I've got a highway to gratitude, which changes all your emotions. Raise your standards. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Maybe it'll help you is to think about it this way. I, I try to explain standards to people with a different set of words. Think of it as everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Like, think about it. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on. I, I should lose some weight. I should work out more. I should make more calls. I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way or I'm gonna make the way, you can discover something that you're really passionate about, but in order to do it, you gotta get out of the story of what you can't do and you gotta put yourself on the line. If you want things to get better, you gotta get better. If you want things to change, you gotta change. But you gotta do it deliberately and consciously. If you get up and you just have no discipline whatsoever, you get no value of anything. You know, diets don't work when you don't do them. Exercise doesn't work when you don't do them. But most of the people have some experiences that they want to shift. And once you shift those things, your whole life changes. But life is constant growth. My life isn't here because I went to one seminar one time and now my life is fit for life. I, I work out, I train my mind, I train my body. 
It becomes a lifestyle.